Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Spiel mit Lucas Dribble Fever, which is German for we got a fever and the only cure is more dribbling. And now I'm going to be doing a run through of this day because, well, this game is very, very difficult to get. It came out in 2010 in Germany only, and it's been very, very hard to find ever since. But a lot of people are interested in this because, well, what's interesting is the publisher Queen Games, so they got the rights to use Lukas Poldowski, who's a famous real world footballer, use his name and likeness on a series of football games. And so they just didn't just bang out quick knockoff games. They got some of the most well-respected designers in the board game industry to make games. So this game, Dribble Fever, is co-designed by Stefan Feld, my favorite board game designer of all time, and Wolfgang Panning, who is one of the co-designers on Fresco. So, and heck, there's another one in this uh, series from Dirk Hen, the designer of Alhambra. <clears throat> So there's some big pedigree going on here, even though on the surface it looks like it's a game for kids and families. And so I'm going to be doing a run through of today so you can see what it's all about and decide whether it's worth tracking this down. Because it's going to, if you are interested in this game, I'll warn you right now, it's potentially going to be tough to find. But anyway, I've already got the game set up here. There's the blue team and the red team. I'll be blue, Jen will be red. And as part of setup, we put all our fielders in a specific layout. Number five, number two, number four, and then number three. Jen's got the same on her side. Nobody's claimed the ball yet because there's a ref coke. And let's see who's going to be the first player. Blue, I am going to be up first. Okay. Now, there are two ways you can play Dribble Fever. You can play in the family-friendly, you know, kind of for kids, kick-and-run version, which is pretty simple. It's very straightforward. It plays very fast. Uh, you know, there's a, a, the ball moves a lot. It just trades hands a lot, you know, a control. And, um, you know, here's basically a summary of the rules. Really, the way you want to play it is the Dribble Fever. That's, you know, that's the name of the game. And there's significantly more rules. There's a lot more complexity. Each of your uh, kids has three stats instead of one stat. There's a whole bunch of additional cards that are added to the game. There's a whole sub game about dominance that's added. It gets a lot more interesting and a lot more deep. But right now in this basic run through, I'm going to be showing you the basics in the kick and run. And then in my extended video, which you can hit the I or follow the show notes, I will actually show the full game and how much more it gets added. Right? Okay, so let's start kicking and running in Dribble Fever. So I'm the first player. At the beginning of the game, everybody starts. Oh, I need to shuffle these. <clears throat> Everybody starts with a deck of the exact same cards. And these are dribbling cards where a kid can actually run with the ball, passing cards where he just passes the ball, and running cards where one of the kids just runs like crazy. And, oops, I haven't reset this from the last time I played. Hey, this is a Lucas card. That's not supposed to be in there at the beginning. Let's just shuffle that back into the Lucas deck, or the Poldy deck, it's called. All right, let's see. Let me make sure Jen doesn't have any of these in here. Yeah, because the interesting thing is, you might not expect, this is a deck builder. Everybody starts, or I should say, both players start with the same starting deck of basic cards that, that show what these kids can pull off. But over the course of the game, the kids are going to get inspired. They're going to want to be like Lucas. They're spieling with Lucas or playing with Lucas. They, and so everybody starts with two Poldy points. Um, and these are uh, currency that you can use to buy more cards and add them to your play deck. Uh, because you can start pulling off really big moves like what Poldy would do. Which I guess is uh, Lucas Poldowski's nickname in real life, Poldy. <clears throat> So, I've got my starting deck of cards, shuffle up a little bit, and I draw one, two, three. Jen has a starting hand of three cards as well, one, two, three. But the coin toss went in my direction, so my team has possession of the ball to begin with. Right, so we are ready to go. <clears throat> and now, the first thing, well, uh, on a player's turn, first of all, they get to speed on a carton. They get to make one move without playing any cards. Then they can carton spielen. They can make additional moves by playing the cards in their hands. So you can make up to, th you make one move guaranteed at least, and then you can make up to three additional moves if you want to play one, two, or three of your cards. Then you refill your hand and potentially buy Poldy cards. And then finally, if you're in position, you can try to go for a goal. Right. So. Um, let's look at what I got in my hand here. Pressing, oh, this is another action you can do. You can actually, if one of your kids is in the same space as another kid, you could actually play this to push the other kid away and try and make room for somebody else making a run for it. So I've got a guy who, I've got a kid who can run and then I could, I could move with the ball. I don't have any cards to do a pass though. But before I'm gonna play these cards, I get to make one move of my own. And now when it's your turn, if you start out in possession of the ball, and I am in possession of the ball, by the way, this is just the coolest little wooden soccer ball you've ever seen. 
So I'm in possession of the ball. That means I can make one move, or I can basically make two spaces. Uh, you know, two in a straight line or diagonally one. So I could basically go one, two, or I could go one, two. So basically I can move one space diagonally in any direction or two spaces orthogonally, effectively. And it could be any of my kids, including the goalie. Although you really want to keep him close to the goal, as you might imagine, because you're really uh, setting yourself up if you don't. But anyway, so I've got to make a move one move, and then I can make additional moves. Now, since I don't have any pass cards, and by the way, I'm holding them like this because the uh, orientation is important because you have to imagine, I'm the blue player, I'm sitting over here looking at the board like this. That means this card is telling me I can only move in this direction. I, it's not like I can rotate it and move in different directions. So, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? <clears throat> well, so, I could make a move. Now, what I'm gonna do here, hmm. I think the first thing I will do is I will move one of my two forwards forward. And remember, I can move up to two spaces. I, I could move them all the way over here, which I might do if I could pass to, to him, but I can't. I'm just going to move him one. I'm going to move him right over here with number two and number four from the other team. That's my one free move. Now I get to start playing cards. I'm going to play this card. I'm going to press, which means this kid who just moved to the other ones, he's going to push one of these kids out of the way in any of these directions. I'll just move this kid over here out of the way. All right, because the, the, the jersey tells you how good a shot they are. This is Jen's best shooter. Her two, well, actually our best shooters are our goalies, but they have to stay by the goal. Um, you know, they, uh, but so this is Jen's best shooter. I'm kind of pushing that, that kid out of the way. So I played this, this gets discarded. I've got two more cards I can play. I will now dribble. Because I got dribble, uh, dribbling fever. I can move diagonally with the ball. Um, and I should say, the cards that show black means just moving a kid in a direction. The cards that show white, which I didn't draw any, means passing, kicking the ball and moving it. The black and white means a kid dribbles, moves with the ball. This kid's going to move over here like this. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> Let's see here. And, you know, move Jen's best out of the way. So that's played. And now I could move somebody else. If I wanted, I, I could move uh, this kid up here to be in position so that next turn, if I get a pass card, I might be able to pass to him and then, you know, get it into the field goal. But, or I could save this card so I can use a future turn. But all these cards have, in the basic game, they have, in the, in the kick and run game, they have two uses. You can play them for their ability, as you just saw me do. I, I, I moved the kid out of the way and then I dribbled. Or you can just simply discard them. For every card you discard, you get two more Lucas points, or uh, Poldy points. So I'll go on ahead and do that. So now I've got four points. Right. I'm out of cards. I can't do anything else. Uh, my carton spieling is over. I played all three of my cards. Now we move on to refilling. Now the first thing I do is, if I want to, I could, and I can afford it, I could buy one of these Poldy cards. And I just made, I started with two, I got two more. So that means I could afford the best one here. I could afford this one that lets you move two spaces in any direction, including diagonal. That's going to cost three. I could get this really strong pass, this forward pass, which would only cost me two. But man, I could pass the ball really far. Or I could dribble further than normal um, to the left or the right. And this only cost me one. But you know what? This one cost me three. What the heck? Let's go on ahead and pay through the nose. I'm going to buy this one. That cost me three. So I've still got enough to buy one more. But you can only buy one card per turn. Now, on a turn, if I don't buy any cards, if nobody buys a card, then the highest numbered card gets removed from the game. So this one just disappears. Because this deck of Poldy cards is the timer. Once this deck is empty and once all of these are gone, either they've disappeared or players have bought them, that triggers the end of the game. So I've just gone on ahead and bought this. And this goes directly into my hand. Now, my hand size is three. So since I bought one, I'm going to draw two more cards. This is my hand for next turn. i got a lot of running I can do now. And I can also make a pass. So that is what my next turn is going to be all about. A new card comes out. And now there's one more step to my turn. I have... Um, I, I've, I did a free move. And I kind of knocked Jen's stuff around. Then I, uh, what do you call it? I played all three of my cards. Then I bought a card and I refilled my hand. And now the last thing is, I can potentially try to shoot for a goal. Now, if, uh, if I'm in control of the ball still, which I am, I can shoot for a goal as long as I'm on my opponent's side of the board. If I were over here, I would not be able to shoot for a goal. But I'm over here. I've made it into Jen's territory. But I'm about as far away from the goal as I can be, which means I get plus zero added to my shot. 
But here's the thing, um, you know, if you can't, if I can't push any further forward, Jen's just going to rush up now on her turn. She's going to grab the ball and push it into mine. So I do, I haven't moved very far forward, but I want to keep pushing that ball up. So I'm going to take the shot, even though it's a crazy long shot. Now to take the shot, I have to figure out the defense value, which in this case, it, you know, it actually reminds you right here. The defense is, the defense is seven. If the goalie is in position, if the goalie was not in position, the defense would be the base defense would be zero, but it's seven. Now it's seven plus um, any other kids that were in the same space as me, which is none. So it's just seven. But if Jen had like it, it would be eight, this would mean nine. So the more kids who are in the same space as me, that's why it's good to push them away or move around from them. The uh, the more the bigger the defense is. But as it is right now, the defense is seven. So now I've got to figure out my offense which is based on the distance, which unfortunately is very far away, so it's zero. If I were closer, it'd be one. If I were even closer, it'd be plus two. It'd be plus three if I were right there, right at the field goal, but it's zero, plus the natural shooting ability of this kid. Now, the lower the jersey number, the better a shot they are, the better a kicker. This is uh, my best kicker. Where is uh, he? Uh, he's got a three, so his base skill is a three. Now there's these other stats, but they only matter in the advanced version. Their speed and their strength, but their aim, yeah, that's the only thing that matters in the basic version, is three. So the defense is seven, minus my offense of three means my target is four. Which means I've now got a roll, which means I've got to roll a five or a six. If I do it, I score. But it's a bit of a long shot. Let's see if I can pull it off because I'm shooting about as far away as possible. I need to see a five or a six. Here we go. And it's a one. That's about as bad as it could be. Now, if I had hit exactly the target, if I had hit a four, what would happen is the shot goes in, it collides with the goal post and bounces off and ends up randomly in a spot. But since I rolled below the value, which is what I figured would happen, um, it, you know, unfortunately, that means the goalie actually caught it. And now Jen gets to deploy that um, ball somewhere towards one of her guys, um, which is why I wanted to push her best guy further back so that he was not closer to the field. Because Jen's probably going to try to, to kick it to her best guy. But to find out where this goalie is going to throw it, we have the goalie die. Now, in my compare, if I'd hit a four, so the thing was just bouncing off, I would roll the die. It's a blue, and that means it would have landed in the blue space. Or if I'd rolled the purple, it would have landed here in the penalty zone in the um, purple space. Where the heck is the purple space? Oh, right, yeah, it would have just landed right here. That wouldn't have been very good. But because Jen actually controls it, her goalie stopped because I, I rolled below the target. Because I knew it was a long shot, but still, I just didn't want to be sitting with the... Well, you know what? Maybe it wouldn't have been bad just to be sitting here with the ball because I was fairly far away from all of Jen's guys, but she would have instantly moved up. So I want the ball as far away from my goal as possible. So I've moved it. So now the goalie's got it, and now the goalie's going to throw it. But where he throws it depends on the dot. If, if it were bouncing off, it would go randomly into one of these spaces, but instead Jen gets to now choose. She rolled yellow. So that means she can now throw this to any yellow space on the board. Um, and I reckon she will throw it to there. Okay. So that was a bit of a risk because now the ball is definitely in my zone, um, which is not good, but we'll see how well Jen plays that. So the goalie threw it way out there and that was the end of my turn. Now it is Jen's turn. So the first thing she gets to do on her turn is she gets to make a free move. But you remember how when it was my turn, on my turn, I, at the start of my turn, I was in control of the ball. So that meant I got to make a move within these confines, you know, up to two spaces or one diagonally. If at the beginning of your turn, you are not in control of the ball, you pick whichever one of your fielders is closest to the ball and instantly move them there. So her four and her two are equally far away. So Jen's just instantly going to move her two over there and boom, her best shooter has now got it. And this is what I was hoping to avoid. That's why I tried to push her out of the way. But Jen rolled lucky and got a, you know, so anyway. So Jen is now in control of the ball. And that was her free move now. So now all she's got is these three cards. She's off here all by herself. And what can she do? Unfortunately, she doesn't have any moves. I mean, she'd love to, you know, maybe like have a, yeah, that's too bad. If she had the, if she could move this kid up here, then she could do a pass to him and stuff like that. But as it is, all Jen's got right now is passing and passing and dribbling. But you know what? Jen's going to take a shot. She is going to play one card, her dribble card, which is, says move diagonally with the ball. 
So Jen's going to move up one. That moved her out of the zero into the plus one. So she's going to take a shot. And now she could also pass, but none of her guys are close to pass to. So she, and she could trash one or both of these to get more Poldy cards. You know what that, I think she'll trash both of these to get um, four more Poldy points that she'll use later to buy stuff. Now, um, so she's used all three of her cards. She could buy one card. She'll pay for the four she just got for discarding cards to get this powerful dribbling that's dribbling in any direction. And then she draws two more for her next hand. And I don't know what it is. And now she can take a shot if she wants. She doesn't have to. But um, again, if she doesn't, she knows on my turn, what will happen is I will have to immediately move my closest guy to take possession. Now, unfortunately, this is my worst shooter. So he'll move up, and then he'll start trying to move the ball in the other direction. So Jen knows that. So it behooves her to take a shot. Although if my worst guy moves up, she doesn't know. Maybe I don't have very many good cards to move the ball. Maybe it'll stay over here. But Jen's going to take the shot. In the kick and run, as you might imagine, you're running and kicking quite a bit. It's a really simple, streamlined game. You're pretty much um, going for a shot almost every round. But anyway, so my defense is 7. Jen's offense is 3 because of the strength of her best shooter. This uh, girl shooter here has a strength of three. So it's seven plus, or you know, seven minus three minus one means Jen just has to hit a target of three, whereas I had to hit a target of four. And, oh, by the way, another uh, Lucas card came out. And so Jen will go for it. And she got a three. Her target was three. That means my goalie didn't get it, but she didn't get a goal either. It's gonna hit the um, frame and bounce off. And wherever it lands, it lands in the orange space right there. Nobody has it. Nobody's in control. So that was Jen's turn. So not a very high scoring game so far. Um, and now I am up. First thing I get to do is I get to make a free move. I have to pick whoever's closest. Now these are both tied. So whichever one I want, I'll take my better shooter because again, the lower the jersey, a better a shooter they are. I'll move that there. And now I got to start pushing. Fortunately, I've got my nice Poldy card I bought last turn. Heck, I could, I could run really, really hard. But unfortunately, these are just run cards. They're not dribbling cards. Um, and in fact, I, what I have here is a pass, but it's not a very long pass. This is kind of scary. I'm not going to do very well getting... Now, it's a shame. Last turn, instead of buying this Poldy card, I could have bought this Poldy card, which could have just been a kick way over here. And that would have been perfect. Would have been right to the guy, but I don't have that one. I've just got this little dinky pass, which isn't great. Um, but what will I do? I'll just use, I'll play my regular run card to have, actually, no, no, this is the guy who got the free move. Then I'll play regular run card to have my three move up diagonally one space. Then I will play the pass, pass, woo. Okay, so now my best, or my second best shooter has the ball. And now I could have somebody else move um, up to two spaces diagonally, which is huge. But I don't have any more pass cards. I mean, like, so I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to go, oh, I don't want to discard a Poldy card, though. So I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to discard. I'm just going to keep it in my hand for next turn. And so I'm done. I, uh, and now we move on to getting more cards. I've got one more Poldy. I'll go on ahead and take that, and I'll buy this dribbling. So now, and then I refill my hand up to three. And so uh, I've got a lot of dribbling I can do and some running next turn. Another Poldy card comes out. Uh, oh, a nice pass. It's expensive at three. And um, now, can I go for a goal? No, I cannot. I have control of the ball, but I'm not on Jen's side of the field, so I cannot make a shot. My turn is over. Now it is Jen's turn. She's not in control of the ball, so the first thing she does is her closest guy takes control of the ball. Oh, no. Okay. And now what is Jen going to do? I think Jen... <clears throat> All right. Jen is going to dribble. Uh, and this is a dribble diagonally, which is very nice because it's a Poldy card. She does dribble over here. It's a shame she's all by herself. She'd love to dribble right up here into the plus three. Um, so she's got these. They aren't going to do her much good. She will... Um, no, she, she already has a bunch of Poldy. She'll get rid of this pass because the ball is so far away. She doesn't have to pass anybody to get two more Poldy points. She'll save this for later in case she wants to push one of my guys out of the way. That's an interesting thing. If I have two people on the same spot, this is a wall that Jen cannot move through. So she might need that to be able to push my guys out of the way. And so she's done. She, um, she has one card she's not playing. Now she's going to buy a new card. She will get this. She'll pay three to get this cool pass card. And she draws back up. A new card comes out. 
where are all the orange cards? Oh my gosh, they're right there, down there at the bottom of the deck. I've been wanting to go because I wanted to show you these cards. In fact, let's just say this, no, let's just say this card came out because this is a different type of card. Now, Jen's already bought her card, but on my turn, I'll have the chance to buy this. A, a blue card goes directly in your hand. Yellow cards just sit out here, and you can use them whenever you want, and they don't count against your hand limit. So they're very, very cool to buy. So anyway, so Jen bought another card, and now at the end of her turn, she's going to go for a shot again. There's no reason not to. She's getting um, three plus two. She's got a five versus my seven. That means her target is only two now. She's feeling it. She thinks she's going to make that goal, and she rolled a four. Goal! Jen just scored the first point of the game. All right. So that means um, we reset everything. Oh, by the way, shoot, shoot, shoot. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Um, when you're making shots, remember I made a shot early on. When you make a shot and you fail, as a, uh, to, uh, to, to, to give you something for having failed, you get one poldy. So um, I totally forgot about that, that I got a poldy. And then I, see, I think this is Jen's second shot at this, isn't it? Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jen also got a free poldy when she made her first shot miss. But now she made a shot, so she scored a point. So now we reset everything. We put everybody back in their default spots, which are five and three, uh, two and four, um, and two and four, five and three. Everybody resets. Uh, it's my turn, so I'm going to be in control of the ball, and we continue. And like I said, the game's going to keep on going like this until we get to the end of the deck. But the new thing that's come out is I am definitely going to want to buy this because this, whenever I need it, gives me plus one on my chance at making a goal. Now, And also, it has another feature as well, but we don't use that in the basic version of the game where you can actually increase your dominance, and, uh, which is another stat. So anyway... So, it is my turn. I've got a bunch of cards in my hand. I could dribble like crazy, um, but I can't really push in very far because I don't have any pass cards. So, um, you know, I'm probably going to move around. I could probably play this, uh, you know, come way over here. Oh, but remember, since I'm in control of the ball, first of all, I get to make another move. But, um, I, again, I don't have any passing. But I'm going to stop right there because those are the basics. We keep going until we've gone through all the Poldy cards. That triggers the end of the game. Whoever has a high point win or you get a tie. And that, folks, is the basic kick and run of Dribble Fever. But like I said, the real game is when you play the advanced version. So now if you want to see that, you can hit the eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes to see the full game in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.